It's actually quite accusatory, implying as if I knowingly went into a con with ill intent of potentially spreading sickness. If you actually gave a shit about anybody, dude, you would have gotten tested here. Because these were bad enough that you looked at Dayquil and thought this was needed. Context! FF14 FanFest happened recently. Someone went to FanFest, which is the yearly convention for Final Fantasy XIV. There's one in the US and there is one in Japan. Big place, big convention, a lot of people. And someone decided to go to a giant convention after having COVID symptoms. This music's killing me. There we go, this is better. Is the comic that important we can't read it ourselves? I'll zoom in on it. Uh, but yes, the comic is super important because the comic is incredibly tone deaf and obscenely incomprehensible. So we're going to read through the comic. I'm going to read through these tweets. Uh, quick little disclaimer. Seriously, if anyone comes across this VOD, comes across any clips of it, if I find that you're in the community and you're harassing anybody, you will be you will be nuked. You will be removed from everything. Selenia. <laughs> This is public, it's on Twitter, so I'm gonna talk about it. Bull. <laughs> Alright, so. I guess we'll just start at the first tweet. Ah, oh, yes, my whole FF14 FanFest experience in a nutshell. Please enjoy some Scheidenfreude. Scheiden? Scheidenfreude? Scheiden. How do you say this word? How do you. Is it Scheid, Scheidenfreude? How do you say this? <laughs> Is this Scheid Scheidenfraud? Schwa Scheidenfraud? <laughs> say it as badly as you can. <laughs> Annoy the Germans. Put it in TTS. Okay. TTS. Schadenfreud. Schadenfraud. Shade and Freud. Shade and Freud. All right, we're gonna go with what the chat cat says. Ah, oh, yeah. Ah, oh, Vegas. After two whole weeks of arduous work travel, I can finally have some time off to relax and have fun. It was time to finally meet my FF14 friends for the first time IRL. I was looking forward to this trip. Keep in mind this sentence here of after two whole weeks of arduous work travel. First, there was Bane, our resident tank. There's also Val, our shot caller and our healer. Rose, the leader, she's our bard. And lastly, there's Epi. Epi. I'm going to call this person Epi. He's often just our fill for pretty much any content. Mr. Octuplet Legend. We had everything planned. The fancy dinners to eat, the Vegas shows to attend. It was all going to happen all weekend long. We met on Thursday night and had an excellent dinner together. After our first... Vegas night together, we all retired to our rooms excited for FanFest's first day. Okay, so some of these are, uh, I'm gonna have to just zoom in like this because for some reason this person animates their comics in GIF format. Ah, uh, yes, the first day of an unforgettable experience. Friday, 7 a.m., the first day of FanFest. Mm, chills. The hell was that? Probably just my body not being used to the extreme heat. 20 minutes later. Hmm. Day quill and mask up? Yeah, better safe than sorry. My man's dressed for a, a, a chemical cloud at this point. And Epi apparently chimed in at some point. You know, I'm going to be there at 7 a.m. I hear some people are even planning to line up at 5 a.m., which is normal for a convention. People are crazy. If it's supposed to open at 10, people are going to be there at 7. People are going to be there at 3 a.m. That prior morning or that morning looks like FNAF convention from the comic. <laughs> I think it's these are just furries. <laughs> Miss me with that shit. Dude, that, no, it's insane for me. I, I ain't got time for that. I'd rather not go to the convention. No, I get it. Like if you go to a convention, it's, it's one of those things of you're not going to get everything done. You're not going to do everything. Epi's just being crazy. There's no way it'll be that bad. And it is that bad. There are lines all around the building. It's 8 a.m. The doors won't even open until 10. And so we joined the line. The crazy part is it was already 100 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Which, if you're already getting chills and shakes, and, and they're bad enough that you're looking at some day quill and a mask and going, yeah, I should probably take that. Maybe don't go outside in 100 degree weather. Maybe definitely don't go outside around a bunch of people who are at a convention that aren't sick currently, probably. Maybe don't do that. Look, am I leaving my house? <laughs> It's not, so I may stay in line for eight hours. Well, what if it's a really cool thing that you want, though? What if it's a really cool Okami figure? Funnily enough, that same weekend, there was a basketball event going on in the same hall, too. With each passerby, you could definitely tell who was going to which gathering. Finally, after a long wait, the doors finally opened. The line was moving, and we can finally feel the sweet, sweet air conditioning. Honestly disappointed with no announcement of female Rothgar. We'll get that at some point, maybe. We'll see. Maybe 8.0 will bring uh bring from Roth. Maybe. Maybe. The first thing that greets you is this gigantic banner. The air was filled with anticipation. Do I read this left to right or right to left? My manga brain is not sure. Val tried to sneak in, but was unfortunately spotted and turned away. Val was... Who was Val? Val was the healer. <laughs> Impossible to tell anymore. <laughs> Look, you gotta sit out outside in the heat, alright? You gotta let your anticipation cook. So Val tried to sneak in, and then Val went back to the hotel to watch the keynote via a stream. Keep that in mind, too. We're going to talk about that also. The show floor was real cool with each area themed after an in-game zone. Each zone had their own mini game to play. Playing them all gets you a special gift. I never did find out what that gift was. When the keynote started, the place got jam-packed. So packed that I did get quite nervous. Honestly, the keynote was fairly predictable in mid. In hindsight, I wasn't sure what I expected considering they save all the cool stuff for Japan Fan Fest anyway. During the whole time, I was just nervous thinking about the crowd rush. Oh man, if everyone rushes for the activities in the back. By the time the keynote ended, my legs were killing me. And there goes my whole FanFest experience. 1.30 p.m. So this is 11, 12. That's three and a half hours. Yes, I counted because <laughs> I am big dumb. That's three and a half hours from Shakes, Dayquil, to 1.30. Now we're entering. Suddenly I felt a chill. Suddenly I felt chills and body aches during our walkover. This is when you leave. This is when you, you exit the convention. This is when you leave. If you're already this unconfident and selfish, this is your chance to like actually turn back before you turn into a terrible, terrible person. My condition worsened when we arrived. The burger I ordered looked like a daunting foe. I could feel Gordon's fear judging, Gordon's ever judging face staring at me, pounding away at my sanity. Gordon Ramsay, I'm assuming. What's going on with that face? That's, uh, that's the greatest chef in the world. You will show him some respect. Chills continue to rack my body. All I could do is pick at my burger. I started to feel... A hard pounding behind my eyes. Crap, I'm seated so close to the others. Okay, so we have someone who woke up the day of the convention with chills that were bad enough. And keep keep in mind the chills here. We're going to cover that too. That were bad enough to even consider Dayquil and a mask. Not just a shiver. These were chills. When you're sick, you know when you're sick. Your body has a a primal response. Your your body, you can tell you're sick. You don't even have to have a fever yet or feel too bad. You have a like you have a feeling in your gut like oh man, I feel like crap. Like this is it. I'm just I'm going to die. <laughs> Not 3 hours later, we have body aches and chills appearing again and a loss of appetite completely. Yet this person is with their uh, friends, as they're calling them. I'm sorry, if you're someone's friend, I don't think you would be 
risking giving them COVID. I don't care if you have a mask on and you took some DayQuil. COVID happened. We all know what the symptoms are. We all know what it's what to look out for. And we'll get to the possibility of immunocompromised people at this convention. But let's continue. It was truly horrible. I, I need to go. I guess the day quill wore off. I felt so drained that I couldn't even bear a trip with the with the monorail. Options for an Uber instead. I quickly got okay, so now he spread uh he spread these this possibility of COVID to an Uber driver who's completely innocent in this scenario. Opting for an Uber instead, I quickly got back to the hotel and collapsed feverish and nauseous. Sleep didn't come easy. My whole body under the sheets felt like it was on fire. Meanwhile, my head felt like it was in a tundra with the AC blasting. He got up at 7 a.m. and it's 1 p.m. Is that right? Yeah. 1.30. He got up at 7. And at 1.30 p.m., chills and body aches started. Which means this motherfucker has had COVID for a long time. You don't just catch it that morning or the day prior. So keep in mind what I said earlier about the, the arduous work travel. The pain too, paired with the congestion, it felt like my head was going to explode. All I remember was lying in bed thinking, this is COVID, isn't it? Later that night, Bane stopped by Walgreens and picked up a COVID test kit for me. And look, it's positive. A million questions raced through my head. The hell do I even do? Did I infect the others? Yes, asshole. Am I stuck here in Vegas during the quarantine? During quarantine, how much will I have to shell out? How much will changing my flight cost? Oh God, my work. I don't even have my laptop with me. There goes all my vacation plans. Bru buddy, your vacation plans should have ended here at this panel. You shouldn't have been, oh, I'll just day quill a mask up. It should have been, hold on, before I go to the convention, I'm going to go get a COVID test. And I'm going to miss the first maybe six, six hours, half half the first day of this convention because I'm going to test once. I'm going to let it sit there for a bit. I'm going to test again. Your vacation plans should have ended here and you just eat the cost and deal with the fact that you got shit luck. That's all it is. But instead, you infected people on the monorail that you're showing yourself on possibly. You were in close proximity to random strangers in line. Then at the keynote, you were shoved into a crowd with who knows how many fucking people. And then you go to a restaurant somewhere. Spend more times around people that are apparently your friends. And possibly infect them or pass her by in the restaurant. Then come home and decide to take the test. There's no there goes all my vacation plans at the positive proof. The vacation plans should be on pause the moment you suspect it. Yeah, it takes a while. I'm getting PTSD. Phoenix Wright enters the room. So, this comic's not done yet. And there's a reason this has been blowing up so much. Great job, Hilton. Thanks for being so great at taking care of your customers and preventing the spread of COVID slash S. All right, Google will know what to do. And I, I guess this is a screenshot of what this person Googled. Contact the hotel. Hi, is this the front desk? How may I help you? Uh, yeah, I'm staying here and just found out that I tested positive for COVID. What are your quarantine policies? Well, sir, we can offer you no contact room service for basic necessities that you need, but we'll be stopping housekeeping. We hope you understand. So the implication here is also that this person may have just helped infect or expose housekeepers as well. I, as someone with asthma, I'm paranoid of COVID. I'm very much aware of it. I'm never going to pump gas without a glove on ever again. I carry gloves in my car all the time now. I keep hand sanitizer on me all the time. Yes, I'm vaccinated, but I have asthma to the point where... Have I, ha have I had COVID? Yeah, I've had COVID. I've had it once. Um, luckily, it was once Paxlovid was released. So I was able to get on medication for it and knocked it out in about four or five days. It was terrible. And I don't know if I have any long COVID symptoms. But... 
for someone who's like who's immunocompromised or asthmatic it is a lifelong crippling process scar tissue in my lungs will affect me much more than it will a normal person and if you're immunocompromised it'll wreck your body much more than it would even myself you don't again i i don't everyone's already said this so we're not gonna hammer on this too hard this is where your vacation ends this is when you get tested and probably just pause for a day and you go home Immu what's immunocompromised uh immune your immune system's compromised it's not as strong as it used to be so uh i think lupus is a is is a disease that has immunocompromised uh immune systems as like its main setback debuff whatever you want to call it under uh anyway let's continue this We'll be stopping housekeeping. We hope you understand. Understandable. Will you guys be able to extend my stay for quarantine? I'm sorry, sir. We're a large hotel and we are at full capacity. So after Sunday, my checkout time, I'm just out on my own. Unfortunately, yes, sir. Well, all right, then. How about my friends? They're with me in my suite. Can I move them out to a separate room or me? Once again, we're at full capacity. Sorry, sir. Okay. You can't. You can't blame the Hilton here when earlier on you specifically highlighted it's not just fan fest that's going on there's another con there's another event going on there's a basketball event which I doubt people are there for that or staying overnight but it's also Vegas so some people may have moved like headed out that way but there's a lot of people even if it is just fan fest Hilton is packed and I believe it fan fest is huge it's not a small convention you can't blame the hotel staff for not babysitting you and not taking care of you. You should have left at the panel of, I have body chills, maybe. Enough that makes me go, oh, I need DayQuil. Maybe leave then. Don't blame the hotel. This is all your fault. This is all you. Oh boy, here I go. Wasting all this money for a failed vacation trip. Well, that was a useless call. A quarantine would be about five days, so I need to expend my, extend my stay for four more. That's like roughly $800 just to fester and suffer alone boxed up in this room. The hotel and Vegas folks clearly don't seem to care about spreading it anymore, it seems. Where I don't understand where this person is getting this idea of the Vegas staff and the hotel don't care about spreading it. They, they specifically offered him no contact room service and stopping housekeeping so that he could quarantine. I don't know where this blame on the hotel in Vegas, folks, whoever they are, be they security at the event or whatever is coming from. All the options are terrible. I need to go home. You should have went home at the first sign of body aches after you tested and the first sign of shivering. FanFest is already a bust for me at this point. I might as well just cut my losses here and at least suffer comfortably at home. And then we have, luckily, the flight wasn't too costly to change. Yeah, they're, cooper they're cooperating. He's just coping. My man is, is refusing to accept responsibility for the fact that... And, and here's the thing I said to keep in mind. This motherfucker... Two whole weeks of arduous work travel. There's no fucking way... He came off a two-week work travel trip, got COVID between the travel trip ending, him hitting the convention, and then woke up with body chills. There's no way this dude has been traveling with COVID for probably uh, at least half of these two weeks. There's no fucking way. And the fact that this, this person thought, A, it was a good idea to make this comic, and B, include in this comic little tidbits like the hotel in Vegas folks clearly don't seem to care about spreading it anymore is the most hypocritical borderline sociopathic way to think about this I'm not I'm not going to psychoanalyze this person I'm using a hy hyperbolic example perhaps narcissism is a better word <laughs> 
It's not my fault for spreading COVID to people. It's people's fault for catching it and being around me. Yeah. Yeah. It's literally that. It's, but my vacation, but me, but my fan fest trip would be ruined. I'd have to pause it if I had to go home. I'd have to lose out on this opportunity. I can't, come on. I can't infect my friends. That's not possible. I'm sorry. If you're this person's friend, they don't give a shit about you. If they really cared about you, they would be like, hey, bro, sorry, I can't go. I think I have COVID. I don't want to get you sick. Because COVID's a serious thing. Even if my friends would go, oh, it's not that bad. I've had it three times. I know how bad it is. My family's in the medical field. My entire family is. I know how bad it is. And I know a lot of people that'll sit there and go, nah, COVID's not that bad. Okay, cool. It can be gentle. It can also be one of the worst things to happen to you in your life. So, you know, I'm just not going to risk it. I don't want to like, just because you think your, you know, your immune system is strong enough. I don't want to risk it. I don't want to be that responsible party for hurting my friend in a lifelong uh, resultant infection or comprom compromise compromisation, compromising moment of their health. It can be awful, dude. We almost lost people. Exactly. This person, this person is incredibly selfish and writing this comic is so fucking tone deaf. It's insane. We're going to get to another thing that they posted. Screw Vegas and FF14 Fan Fest was mid. I heard people who lined up at 7 a.m. for merch and never even got to go into the store. Yeah, that happens. You're not going to get to see everything. The end. Very next day, I left at 11 a.m. I left my Fan Fest wristband behind for Val, who couldn't get a ticket. So at least now he could attend with mine. Okay. So before we finish this panel, this shit irked me. This motherfucker early on had a friend who tried to sneak in. This person, Val, their healer, who tried to sneak in because they couldn't get a ticket. I don't know if they couldn't afford it. They just sold out, whatever. Bruh, the day you wake up with these fucking body chills, again, you get a test. If you're positive, you go the fuck home. And you know what? If you want to give him your ticket, give him your ticket. Give him your ticket and disinfect it. But you don't wait till you're you're like agonizingly in bed, vibrating from body shakes and dying inside to go, oh, now I'm going to test in time. It's time to go home. By the way, here, you can have the ticket that I've been hugging to my body and carrying around with me for the last day like this so that you can go in. That's fine. Dude, why? I don't. I'm sorry. This person is not a good friend, and they're just a bad human being. And we're gonna get to the other thing that that they posted. But during the whole trip back home, I couldn't help but feel like eyes were on me. Was it because of my double masking, or was I just looking particularly sick? All in all, I finally made it home. I feel guilty as hell traveling while sick. But honestly, what was I to do? I don't know. Don't fucking go, dude. Don't go. Maybe not bad, but thoughtless. The resultant action is something that harms other people. Thoughtless, it might be the catalyzation for it, or thoughtlessness might be the catalyzation for it, but the end result is harm to other people. I'm not going to excuse ignorance for maliciousness, but I will say ignorance can result in a, a bad resultant action or outcome. And if that's the case, if you're that uncaring to let that ignorance remain and that inability to look at at the situation around yourself, you're just a bad person. You had signs you were sick and still went to the convention. Thanks, I guess. Signed, someone who got COVID at FanFest. This was this was five days ago, six days now. I, caught, I screenshotted this yesterday. So the person who wrote the comic responded, damn, I'm genuinely sorry that I couldn't convey my narrative clearly and concisely to you, frowny face. Please drink lots of fluids and feel better. So he got hit with negative 800 karma. <laughs> Edit. Phew. Now that I'm finally off work, I can elaborate a bit further. I'm actually very surprised you took, a, took that takeaway from my comic. It's actually quite accusatory, implying as if I knowingly went into a con with ill intent of potentially spreading sickness. If you actually gave a shit about anybody, dude, you would have gotten tested here because these were bad enough that you looked at Dayquil and thought this was needed. 
That is the complete opposite of what I would do, and I'm disappointed that I couldn't convey my frustration of the whole situation clearly. What my piece was trying to show, that I had absolutely zero signs of anything wrong, except a sudden chill in the morning that lasted a minute. Okay. If it lasted a minute, why the hell did you go, I need Dayquil and a mask? The mask I can get because of the reality we exist in now. This is like me waking up, urinating, and getting the the, the pee shivers. <laughs> and going, well, I guess I have the super cancer now. I better go take my meds. Phoenix Wright slowly going for coffee. <laughs> the wild part was that the feeling was so brief that it was extremely hard to ascertain if it was truly a sign of sickness or not. Yet you went for the day quill. Please consider this. You spend quite a bit of money. Here comes the me, me, me part. And time to schedule a vacation. And on the day of, you suddenly feel a bit, a bit chilly. Would you immediately jump to the conclusion that you're sick? I actually doubt most would. No, actually, um, let's see. I had, I've, I've had many meetings this year with people at my college, with people in my career, job opportunities, etc. that I have had to go, hey, I need to cancel. I think I might have COVID. I'm going to go get tested. I'll call you back and let me know if we can reschedule tomorrow. And I go get a fucking test. I don't sit there and I go, me, 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 me. I, I can just pop some DayQuil. No, I think about the other human beings around me. I know I seem edgy on this stream sometimes, and I, I use language sometimes that people don't agree with, and I make like food autism jokes, blah, blah, blah. IRL, I'm I, I might make the same jokes, but I'm a little bit more considerate than I am on here. You want to compare this to like a meetup with friends? Like instead, we could just ask to use a video call. It's not hard. It's not hard to be considerate. I actually doubt most would. And in my case, I absolutely did not. But in fact, still consider precautions by masking up and taking a couple pills just in case. Okay, DayQuil doesn't make COVID not happen. In hindsight, I could have done better by immediately taking a rapid test. But I have to admit, my judgment was clouded by the excitement for the day ahead. Okay, I get that, but I, I don't care. I don't care. I put off buying a car I wanted due to something like this. Where I didn't want to get someone sick or hurt and I just... I put off something I had a lot of money invested in. Either way, I hope this response conveys my opinion and reason of judgment at the time. I had no notion that I was actually sick until I was already at the venue and having lunch with my friends. Shivers that are enough to take DayQuil. And chills and body aches during the walk over to the restaurant not at the restaurant over to the restaurant this is the verbiage that this person is using my condition worsened when we arrived so it got worse from here to when they arrived you knew you knew you were sick i'm I, i'm not i'm not going to give this person that much benefit of the doubt when their recounting of these events literally contradicts the word choice that they used in this comic. It's confusing how he suddenly got the taste issue. VR chat convention. <laughs> uh, take that as you will, but my comic was more of a ha ha, look at how shitty my luck was, laugh at me kind of deal. Was it? I mean... Why the weird, uh, weird blaming on Hilton and not to mention the rest of the hotel staff and the Vegas folks, whoever they are. Why, why the weird negative 
shade thrown at them. This doesn't this sound this doesn't sound like ha my luck was bad. If you still feel that I did wrong by attending the con in my fleeting moment, then I deeply apologize. Regrettably, I must admit, as brief as it was, I may still have contributed to the spread. Oh, you did. You did contribute. Wanting reality to be a certain way and reality actually existing as it is is muddy water nowadays. People feel sick and don't want to want to be, so they just pretend they aren't. It's tricky. We don't think he never drank or ate anything that day before that. We'll see. Like, at that point, it's speculation. But hope that clears things up. And there's no hard feelings. Please do take care. I'm hoping that you have a swift recovery and have no long-lasting effects of COVID either. Man, that would be nice to have no long-lasting effects if that was, you know, a choice. But you exposing to somebody and forcing them a year or more of long COVID due to scar tissue in their lungs, inability to taste and enjoy or smell food, I don't know. I, I don't know. Something just doesn't sit right. You just seem like a shitty human being. I don't care about your personal, I wanted it. I was excited, so I didn't take the test. It doesn't matter. If you, were a, if you were a thoughtful person, you wouldn't have A, walked away from this with, yeah, I don't need a test. A equals enough. You would have gotten a test. You probably would have called your friend and said, hey, I'm taking a test if I'm, if I'm, now, if I'm positive, uh, do you want my ticket since you didn't get one? And you know, you can make make his uh, make his year. But no, instead you chose to ignore and just go to the fest anyway because of a selfish desire and not take the test until you were collapsing basically. But that's okay. That's okay. Be be a cool person. I know we don't talk about drama and stuff on this on my stream too much. I wouldn't say this is drama, really. This is just someone who thought it was a good idea to go, ha ha, tee hee, COVID, whoopsies. Which is personal to a lot of people because a lot of people have had family, mem family members die to things like this. I haven't, luckily. Uh, people close to me have had their parents die due to COVID. Even post-vaccines coming out. So... It feels like OC is giving themselves a pity party for, and damage control. I don't know, man. It's it's frustrating. It's really frustrating. So many opportunities to be a good friend and be a good person to those around them, and they chose to not. <laughs> 